Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Monday, and it's the Monday after our Jacktown meetup, so I'm going to uh, have a little video of that. Not much, because I know there's other channels that'll feature it, like 357 Magdad did a uh, some video on it and things like that, so I don't have a lot of video of the actual show, because I had a couple other videos, but... Um, we did go through a few cool things that I want to show you that and and we had a uh, a meetup with a lot of the subscribers there was a couple dozen subscribers there was just absolutely fantastic nicest people in the world you ever want to meet is the subscribers to this channel they really are uh fantastic and we've had uh, we had people normally well, one of our uh, subscribers Noah from uh, Maryland I believe and he's usually the furthest traveled but today we had this uh, young lady from South Carolina show up and uh that's a, that was a a little bit of a trip up there but uh, she had a great time because she picked up a lot of great stuff at the flea market and uh and she enjoyed herself so everybody had a great time let me show you a little sights and sounds of jacktown flea market now here's something you don't usually see too often and there was two at this show this is called a bob o link bobsled it was big in about the late 40s and 50s it came in three sizes how cool is this and when we were kids I mean, that would be something. Really had a break on it. Really nice. Now, there were a good deal of vices at this show this time, but this one was in particular was very interesting. You see this? This is a vice with an anvil combination. You know I have one of these. and uh, But this one is even cooler because it has a little forge with it and a blower. And, you know, you would just put your coal in there. You would crank the blower, and then you had the anvil. Great for the farm. Now, for those of you new to the show, this is Charlie the Wonder Dog, and Charlie uh, is uh, Joe's dog, and he's such a fantastic dog. What was so funny about this, uh, Charlie, this show, is he fell in love with a lawnmower, and he wanted us to buy it in the worst way. Check this out. Why, Charlie? Charlie. <laughs> he wants a haircut. <laughs> hey, bud. How's it going? Yeah, nice. Yeah, gotta get in there. Sounds good. I'm just doing a pan. Can we get Charlie in here? This is Scout Crafter Fan Club. Make sure Charlie is great. I got him in. <laughs> you know, Joe and Charlie. Joe and Charlie. Charlie. That's everybody. All right, let's try a picture. Now, can we just take a moment to appreciate this beautiful shovel? I have never seen one like it before. It was probably a custom made. Just look at it. I mean, you could use this barefoot. How are you today?
quite possibly the best buy of the show at $10 for this table saw. Now this is probably one of my all-time favorite custom mod trucks and what it is it's a uh, an old Mac uh, B cab that was put on a, a Dodge frame a diesel frame it is just a beautiful truck look at that if, if they have offered this truck today just like this with a modern drivetrain I would buy it in a minute. And of course, as always, one of my favorite attractions at Jacktown is meeting up with 805 Road King and Mike, small engine mechanic. They both have channels on YouTube and uh, they do fantastic uh, engine work, making uh, custom engines, things like that. This here is a Briggs inline four that they custom made and there's a whole series of videos to look at. But uh, there's links, I'll have links in the description. This is 805 Road King's channel and, and this is Small Engine Mechanic, which is Mike. You gotta check these guys out. So They're like great. I said, we had such a great time and I'll tell you the truth, yesterday I literally lost my voice. I was yapping so much the whole day, trying to talk to everybody. I'm still, I can hardly talk. And last night I couldn't even, I was, uh, my voice was gone and I had, it was almost like laryngitis. I couldn't, I could not talk anymore. So I'm getting it back a little bit today and I uh, rested up and I'll tell you, you know, you're on your feet for eight hours walking around, you know, you're forgetting to drink water and you're forgetting to sit down. It's, it's, we're so excited over there. Everybody was having fun. Um, a couple things I want to bring up, uh, I am so bad with names. Do you ever get like that? You know, I could be introduced with somebody. It's one thing if you meet one person, you know, if you just meet one person, you kind of can remember. You know, when you're meeting a bunch of people and you're trying to remember names, five minutes after I meet them, I'm like, damn, what was his name? What was her name? I'm terrible, so I apologize. But uh, some of the subscribers brought down some great, you know, just gifts for the show and things like that. Let me show you what now, they Now, these brought. are just some of the great gifts that some of these subscribers brought down. Unfortunately, I can't remember <laughs> only a couple names stick in my head. But you'll see what I'm talking You know, uh, one of the subscribers is a... Uh, Belongs to the Pine Barrens Model Club. Brought down some patches. Another subscriber brought down these great, these great chemical um, dispenser pythons. I forget what the pythons, what they're called. Um, here, uh, this I remember because he, he left his name and it was Mark and Renee Firth. They're out of Bethlehem. Bethlehem. These are new old stock. I remember he got these at a, uh, he said a clean out. And uh, these are new old stack, uh, old stock Ticonderoga. 1388s and and what's nice about these is that they're uh they're made in the usa you know and that's the important thing with the uh, california cedar and again you can see here when they were made in the usa now i don't know where they're made um this is really interesting again i'm sorry i, for, I forget his name but he won one of the auctions that we had the raffles and uh check this out um this is it looks like a ball bearing sizing and it, it says here it's Deltronic. Do you see that Deltronic? Costa Mesa, California, Costa Mesa. And it's, uh, you can see it, it goes from small sizes all the way up to half inch. And on the back here, it's got, and you can see it there. It says the sizes like this is a uh, half inch and this is 15, 30 seconds, all the way down. So if you need to get a ball bearing now, I believe, I'm not sure. You can see they're kind of loose in here. They don't come out though, thank goodness. They're all, he's got the full set. But I believe that this little pin here pulls out. You can see there's a pin, right? I believe that, that, that this is made to pull out and then you punch this hole and it pops the bearing out. So if anybody has ever seen one of these, knows what it is, please leave in a comment. How cool is that though? That's really cool. And, and you know, it's like a sizing for ball bearings. Really interesting. And, uh, and then Noah, our friend, uh, a teenager, the youngest tool collector that ever shows at these uh, shows, but Noah's been a, a, a longtime subscriber, and uh, he brought in these. We're going to be working on these soon, these channel locks, and um, what's nice about them is that, you know, the teeth, uh, the uh, jaws are in great shape. You can see you don't see any light room or anything, so these should, you know, clean up nice. We just have to figure out what we want to do, and the handles aren't beat up. So uh, we'll be getting to that. Noah, thank you so much for those. And then uh, my buddy Cheeky Monkey, he brought in uh, a load of stuff. Look at this, all, all fantastic stuff. What a great guy. And uh, just really nice stuff. Like, look at these two Lufkin 
uh, Lufkin ruler. Um, this one here is a, uh, you've seen these before. It's almost like the, the origin of the tape measure. But you can see this is a steel. It's a steel rule. It's 25 foot. And they were out of Michigan. And look at that. It is just a beautiful rule. You know, you wind it up this way. And uh, here's another one. Look at this one. I have, this is one of the nicest wooden scales or rulers that I've seen because it, it has the regular, it's so tight, it's so nice, and it, it has the extendable, you know, like over here, you can extend it to uh, to do any kind of uh, caliper work over here. You can see how that pulls out. It's so tight. I mean, usually these things are worn out, but this is just so beautiful and, and so nice. This is a Lufkin. Uh, he brought this cool tack puller but how how nice would that be all done up i mean that's just screaming for some a little bit of color in here and a little bit of polish and also i've never seen a trim jack before trim jack knife so i don't even know where this is from but it's a 333 it looked like a, a, a stanley pattern but you know obviously they may, may might have put different names in but this is cast iron really nice um uh the triple a Anybody out there with patrol boys? Because I know I was a patrol boy. <laughs> See, this is patrol man. But yeah, we were patrol boys in the school safety patrol. And uh, we had to wear this badge along with our uh, our white sash. And uh, of course, a, uh, a scout compass, which these are fantastic. I even brought one. I used to use my, mine in the service, believe it or not. I used to bring my own. It was It was great. Um, remember these, these little puzzles, you know, if this was the origin, I think of before the Rubik's cube, remember you would, it would one through 15, you had to get them in and move it around. And, but this is all metal, just really cool. Right. But let me show you the, the thing that, and, and of course he bought a, a case. I think he bought a case of gyroscopes at one time and, and look at that. You know, I, I still have a couple gyros or, you know, if you've seen my, uh, my video on spin tops i have some really I, I find these interesting but i have to show you this because this is what blew my mind okay i want you to take a good look at what you're looking here because this is to me some of the most interesting paperwork that i've ever received and and uh, cheeky monkey brought this and he goes i know you like this kind of stuff he he knows me like a book because of all the stuff he bought but i he i can't believe how fantastic this stuff is these are receipts from jw moore who was a dealer in all kinds of coal you see that here jw moore now first of all let's just look at this for a second because this is just unbelievable you can look at this and talk about this for, i could for an hour but i'm, I'm going to keep it down real quick and let me tell you what it is um jw moore was a uh, a coal dealer in, in Sheridan, Pennsylvania. You can see up here. And uh, uh, the name of the uh, gentleman was Frank Week over here. Was the, uh, the This is the receipt. So he was buying the coal. And you can see here um, on October 21st, 1903. That looks like a three, right? Um, Frank bought 1,000 pounds of coal. Okay? Now, because he bought 1,000 pounds of coal... He got a, a ten cent discount, so it came out to a dollar ninety. Are you are you getting that? A thousand pounds of coal for a dollar ninety. Okay, and look at the this receipt. How nice this receipt is, and look at the, you know, they compared to the junk we get today as a receipt. This is just beautiful. I mean, I'm so glad somebody kept it. Here's another one later on, 1892. Actually, this is before. And uh, what was very interesting was Cheeky Monkey pointed out that you see here, it's red. It looks like red ink, but that's because this was black ink originally, but the red oxide is what remained after the year when the black faded out. So that's red, you know, it was actually a black ink, which I, I would never have known if he didn't mention. But notice how, how at this time he changed the uh, font of the J.W. Moore. You see over here, it changes, you know, and, and again, dealer in all kinds of coal. And, uh, and look at this, he bought, uh, you know, Frank also bought 830 pounds of coal and, uh, he paid a dollar 50, he got a, uh, dollar 25. There was, I guess a balance or whatever. And, uh, 25 cents and dollar 50 for, uh, 830 pounds of coal. And then over here, I think this is, now I don't know what that is. Is that 1899 maybe? I don't know what that is. I know they wrote quick, but again, this is back to pencil. Remember pencil. And um, 
Here it is, 955 pounds of coal, P coal, and uh, he paid a hundred, a uh, dollar fifty rather, a dollar fifty for half a ton of coal. Now, I, I, when I first saw this, I said that's crazy prices. I had to look it up. Turns out that we have two ways to measure coal. There is a there's two types of tons. There's a short ton and there's a long ton. A short ton is what we use here in the United States. That's 2,000 pounds. A long ton is 2,240 pounds, 0.6, I think. But uh, that's considered like a long ton. So um, when they were selling this back then, you know, this was based on that longer ton. And, um, and it was $3.90 a ton back in 1893. So it just goes to show you how... You know, we'll talk about inflation and stuff. I mean, wow, that was amazing. You could buy all that coal for just a dollar. Okay, when I uh, did the raffle on the, uh, when we were at Jacktown, I, I cleaned up a, uh, a breaker bar, a Craftsman Vintage uh, from the 50s breaker bar. And I did that because maybe somebody didn't want the channel locks, already had them. So I had a couple other things there that they could pick from. And uh, I thought maybe you'd like to see a quick cleanup of uh, what we did with that uh, breaker bar. Here we have a nice 50s uh, example of a Craftsman BE breaker bar. You can see that the knurling is a little bit uh, messed up and uh, it has a loose ball detent, but we're going to work on it and get this presentable. Here we have the post wire brush evaluation. You can see we got the knurling somewhat back, and but you can still see that uh, although the name is nice and crisp, it does have some scratches, things like that. And we're going to take it over to the belt sander. Do a nice job on here and get this presentable. And here we go. Gormus project done. Look how nice this came out, huh? Look, you got that Craftsman logo with the BE in there. You know, it looks presentable, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with this now. Even an Erling came out pretty, you know, decent compared to what it was. But uh, the ball detent in here is a little loose, so uh, this uh, this would be a great candidate for a. Return to Sears and see what they can do. Okay, so in closing, uh, like I said, it's it was a really fantastic time. And hopefully one day you'll be able to make it or we'll be able to make a tractor show near you. And uh, thanks again to everybody that showed up. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy everybody had such a good time. In fact, there were so many good buys. My good buddy from Poland, a subscriber, you know who you are. He got the buy of the day of getting a Wilton Bullet Vice for $30. So, uh... There were some great deals there, and uh, and maybe next time or one time you'll be able to make it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day, great week. Bye-bye.